Hey everybody, today is the first video of many to come that will talk about the state of simulation for flight simulators and hardware to go with them, whether it's computers, laptops, or all of your flight sim peripherals from joysticks, hotas, rudder pedals, throttle quadrants, uh, yokes, and everything down the line. Today is the first of all those videos. This one is being produced mid-October 2020. So a lot of things going on right now. But what is the purpose of this video and this whole series, the state of simulation? This will be to give anybody that's just a passerby to aviation simulation, whether you just want to play it as an arcade game for fun, to anybody that is trying to use this to say mentally current, say maybe you're a private pilot, sport pilot, you're a commercial pilot flying for an airline or a cargo outfit or anything in between, I want to help you find the flight simulator and the pieces to go with it to get the most out of that time and money that you're going to spend to make it the most useful for you. So grab yourself a cup of water, a cup of tea, your beverage of choice, coffee, whatever it is, and sit down, relax, because this is going to take a little bit of time. Uh, if you need to, pause this now, go put the kettle on, come back, and I'll be here. All right, so you're back. Let's dive in. So the first thing up, sorry for the squeaky chair today. The first thing up is Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Now, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is bringing an amazing experience to flight simulators and anybody that wants to get into flight sim aviation and learn about aircraft, whether it's for fun or actually if you want to build up all the way to an actual rating and use this as a career of aviation. Now, if you're just a professional simmer and you're planning to play multiplayer, and have your own airline in the aviation simulation world and have fun with that, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 does a pretty good job for that. And I think one of the best parts of Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is really gonna come down to the visuals. Now, the visuals on Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 are well far and above and beyond X-Plane 11. And that's hard for me to say because I actually like X-Plane 11. I think it's a great flight simulator. And we're gonna talk about X-Plane 11 a little bit later. But Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 delivers photorealistic scenery almost with images from satellite imagery and just smooth textures all the way around, even at medium settings and some low settings, you still have a really good flight sim experience and it's a fun game. Now, I say game. It, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 blurs a line between being a flight simulator and an arcade game for aviation fans. And if you're new to aviation simulation, if you're new to aviation period, and you're just passing by watching this video, you're gonna say, no, it's not, this is the flight simulator. And by definition, yes, you are correct. But here's the problem with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 right now. I am a flight instructor. I also fly for Region Airline. Um, it does not really give a high level of fidelity for aviation systems, for the way the engines actually work, for flight dynamics, and a slew of other issues that take it to a higher level of fidelity for flight training purposes and for an actual pilot to stay mentally current. Now, not legally current, but mentally current. And this is where Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 starts to fall apart and become a, a stressful game or a stressful flight simulator because you don't get what you're expecting out of it if you're a real pilot. Now, if you're just going out and having fun on a sunny day, or maybe you're doing IFR practice and you're using a non-complex aircraft with a non-updated non panel, say you're just flying VORs and airways and doing localizer approaches or ILS approaches, it should work with a few little issues here and there, but overall it should work. But if you're planning to do what the majority of the world is doing right now, and you're planning to fly GPS point to point, you're gonna do a SID or a STAR, you're gonna do an LPV approach, this is where Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 really starts to fail. There are a couple of videos I've been shooting and I've been reshooting them to make sure it's not me, user error, making a mistake. And the more and more I do it, I find that there are more and more issues when it comes to the way Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 has programmed the G1000 and the GTN 750 and so many other, other iterations of these avionics systems that are built into these aircraft. And they don't sequence properly. And that's a big deal. 
if you're just a casual gamer and you're playing Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, this really this little bit is not huge to you. But if you're a private pilot or above and you're actually trying to stay current mentally, this is important. X-Plane 11 delivers a full package experience for training from start to finish and that incorporates all the avionics, almost every engine modeling and flight dynamic you would ask for is taken care of in X-Plane 11. Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is still catching up with that. And because of that, if you are somebody who's actually using this to become a better pilot, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is not there yet. Now this is mid-October 2020, I expect them to catch up. So where Microsoft Flight 2020 excels is gonna be visuals and having fun and going pretty much anywhere in the world because it's COVID times, some people are stuck at home, some people, because of your health conditions, you might not be able to get out and go see family, go explore, go on that vacation you were hoping for. And some people you get a chance to still travel, which is great. Stay safe, stay healthy, no matter what you do, I hope. Um, but for anyone that's stuck at home and you have a computer and you're looking for fun, I think Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is a great way to kind of cut down on those COVID blues, especially as we go into winter, depending on where you live in the world. I think this is a great way to just kind of escape. And that's really where Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is now. It's a fun experience. Can you use it for flight training? Not yet. So Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, great fun. Not there for training. Let's move on. So if you are a private pilot, commercial pilot, or anything above and in between, you're a casual simmer, you're a simmer that's doing a, an airline online for fun in multiplayer, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is doing a great job of that, I've seen for some people, but where it really takes off for your training purposes, your mental currency, honing in on skills that if you're a private pilot and you're trying to get better, and you're at any point of your training, uh, X-Plane 11 is the way to go by Laminar Research. Now, X-Plane 11, 11.5, with the Vulcan update, nav updates, and everything else that you're, you want, is by far the go-to flight simulator for training purposes. Now, I know there's Lockheed Martin Prepare 3D version 5. I, however, not had a chance to try it out. It's something I'm planning to do, but with my work schedule and volunteer schedule and family schedule, that just does not work out right now. Um, so, Lockheed Martin Prepare 3D version 5, I'm sorry I don't have time for it. Hopefully sometime in the future I will have a chance to actually talk about it, add into the state of simulation uh, videos here. But let's continue with X-Plane 11, 11.5. Now, you're training or you're wanting to learn how to fly. X-Plane 11 gives you the modeling you want through the default aircraft and even through a lot of payware aircraft to understand systems and how an aircraft should really work and how it should actually fly. Now, this is something that if you've played flight simulators that are arcade style, like Ace Combat, there's not a whole lot of actual flight dynamics to go into Ace Combat to make it very realistic. It's fun. And I would say Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is somewhere in between Ace Combat and X-Plane 11 right now for overall flight dynamics. And it's sad to say that, but it's true. There are some things that they're doing really good, but other things they're really struggling with. And that's really frustrating. But X-Plane 11, you get uh, pretty good, I would say almost true to life, drag ratios for the way an aircraft accelerates and decelerates, the way it climbs, the way it descends. And then when it comes to the way the engines of the aircraft should work, things work pretty much as you would expect, unless you buy or download, say you download a freeware aircraft and it's not modeled perfectly. That's really a that's really something you have to research if you're downloading something that's not part of the default simulator. There are payware aircraft as well that look, oh, they look great. I mean, beautiful payware aircraft. But again, sometimes beauty can be deceiving. You know, everything underneath that skin is just not always modeled as you would hope. I'm not gonna call out any developers right now. That's not my that's not my goal of this video. Just do your research before you buy an add-on for either Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 or X-Plane 11. There are very, very good add-ons for X-Plane 11. And continuing on with this discussion, X-Plane 11 will deliver an out-of-the-box experience for flight training purposes with the default aircraft. The uh, 172, the Baron, a lot of the other aircraft that are included in there 
are great starting points for you to learn how an aircraft will work. And as you move on from understanding flight dynamics, roll, pitch, yaw, uh, pitch power equals performance, and all these other things, you'll get into the avionics systems. And that's where a lot of things really start to take off when the differences between uh, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and X-Plane 11 are. You know, flight dynamics, X-Plane 11 is up here. Now, when you take into account engine modeling, the way the engine should perform, altitude variations for different engines and how they perform as well, and then let's throw in all the avionics and systems with that, X-Plane 11 far exceeds, let me see, out of the viewfinder here, really exceeds Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 right now. And if you're gonna do a departure to arrival, shooting an approach, almost everything I've seen with X-Plane 11 right now works. You can do a SID, a STAR, and an LPV approach, and it properly goes through the sequencing of the G1000, uh, 530, 430 Garmin, and for the 750 and 650 add-ons that you can find out there, from what I've been able to watch and see, those sequence properly as well, which is great. That's what you want. And that, however, is not what Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, as of mid-October 2020, it just doesn't deliver that. X-Plane 11 does. So if you are a private pilot student and anywhere and above, and say you're getting ready for a rating, say you're a certified pilot and you're, you want a new adventure. You know, you want to fly somewhere where you want to get that $100 hamburger, which is really probably when you add up the gas maintenance and the food is probably like a $250 hamburger, but I digress. You say you want to fly somewhere and get some good food and have a good time. You know, it's somewhere you've never gone before. X-Plane 11 gives you that feature, and you can shoot every approach into there, especially if you're an instrument-rated pilot. You can actually get good fuel burn numbers, depending on the airplane you're flying, and practice what you would expect if you were really doing that flight. And Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, it doesn't give you that full package that you would want. X-Plane 11 does. So, I said this before, and I say it again in these videos, mid-October 2020, X-Plane 11 is the go-to sim for every single thing aside from visuals. And I know some people are going to click off right now and then if you've listened this far. Because you're going to say, no, that's not fair. That's not right. X Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is a far better simulator. It's not. From a, f from a flight instructor's perspective, from somebody who flies at a regional airline, and I know there are other people that fly bigger airplanes than me that love Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. But if I was going to sit down a student right now and start teaching them the most basic skills from being a student pilot all the way up, I'm going with X-Plane 11 because it offers that turnkey, out-of-the-box capability of me teaching them everything they need to know that can be done in a simulator. Now, that's the catch. I can't teach you everything you'd want to know in a simulator if you're a student pilot. No one can. You have to go fly at some point. You have to also read and study out of the Far Aim 2020. You need to study out of multiple books or online courses, whatever you want to do. I personally use Sporties and King Schools. I really like both of them. But I used each of them at different times of my training because each of those schools did a few things better than the other depending on what you're training for. And a video and review for that will be coming up on my website, NDB Aviation, in the coming months, hopefully before January. But... It really depends on my flight schedule. Um, so, X-Plane 11, by far, for every training purpose, for every learning how to fly and do everything aviation, X-Plane 11 is a go-to right now. Yeah, if you want to just go have fun, go explore the world, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, out of the box, is by far your best scenery and exploration fun tool to use. X-Plane 11 doesn't have all that photo scenery. It has landmarks. But it doesn't have that overall look and fit and finish of visual acuity that you'd want compared to Microsoft Lights of 2020. Will they in the future? Maybe. Can you add that in through payware? Yes, you can. So if you want the most high fidelity flight simulation experience and you're willing to spend the money, X-Plane 11 with add-ons is going to be a great choice for you. But that's a catch. You got to pay the price, especially for the visuals. But out of the box, Straight up, download one versus the other, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. I've said it, I'm gonna say it again because I'm really trying to hammer in these points on these videos about the state of simulation during this time period. 
Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is going to be your out of the box, fun, go visit everywhere in the world kind of flight simulator and get a taste of aviation. But if you're really looking about training and becoming the best pilot you can be, x 11 is your out of the box best choice. So there you go. Uh, like I said though earlier, I do not have anything to say about uh, Lockheed Martin Prepare 3D version 5 right now. Maybe that'll change in the future. Maybe in my November state of simulation video, I'll have something. So that's it for the simulators. I'm not going to talk about any add-on software right now, whether it be an aircraft, a scenery package, or any of that. I don't have anything right now to talk about. And I want to move on to flight simulation hardware. So if you need to, refresh that coffee, that tea, uh, that beer, or whatever you're drinking, your choice, beverage. And uh, hit pause. Okay, back, let's go. So, it's mid-October 2020. Again, I'm saying that, mid-October 2020. What's going on in the world? Well, there are a lot of things that are being produced. There are a lot of things that are also sometimes hitting a hiatus on production uh, scales. So, if you're trying to buy a flight simulation peripheral, say it's a yoke, rudder pedals, throttle quadrant, hotas, or maybe a mock PFD, MFD, GTN 750, which are out there, they're pretty awesome looking, or a G1000 piece to put into your home flight simulator setup. A lot of these things are being produced. However, this is something I must stress because I've heard this be an issue for people trying to buy certified simulators. If you are going to order a certified simulator, make sure before you put your money down, and I can't stress this enough, before you put your money down, what is their production time? There are companies out there, and I have heard this, I've seen this online, and I know of it personally, and I'm not gonna name names because I don't want a lawsuit, and I hope maybe they're fixing this problem, but I know through personal experience, not me ordering, but somebody I know very well, and other people I know very well, that there are companies taking orders and taking money, but they have no production capability at this current time. So, with that said, before you order a certified simulator, get a promise or some kind of de definite time frame for a delivery of your simulator. And make sure that you can put a deposit versus paying everything up front. If they aren't willing to take a deposit versus taking everything up front, I would maybe walk away for the time being and uh, just go without a certified simulator. I'm sorry to say it. So with that all said, that out of the way, the caution of the times when ordering a BATD or an AATD, all those other things that are not certified. So we have products from Honeycomb Aeronautical, we have products from Thrustmaster, Logitech, CH Products, Ori, and there are several others I've seen recently. And there are some really cool products being produced that are mock-ups that are usable at almost 100%, uh, well, I can't really say 100%, but really good reproductions of a GTN 750, GTN 650, the, um, how was it, the Garmin 500 autopilot system, I have to remember which one exactly it is, uh, G1000s and other pieces as well that are being sold right now. They're, I think, on a month delay, maybe two month delay, depending on the production run and how many orders they have. But there's a lot out there that you can use that if you're willing to spend the money, you can build your own home cockpit for the purposes of just fun or for flight training. Now, keep in mind, it's not certified, so you cannot log time for training with these. You cannot log time for currency with these, but you can stay mentally proficient, which is very important. Uh, and also, if you're just doing this for fun and you want the most realistic setup, there are a lot of things out there for you to make something that works really well to just escape into your computer. I know people make computer rigs for all kinds of different reasons driving simulation, flight simulation, gaming, and for some people, the sky's the limit for value and cost and how much they're gonna throw in. For other people, it's, what can I do to get started without breaking my bank and my budget? Well, let's talk about that. I've had a previous video that's broke down a basic setup, intermediate setup, and advanced setup, and that kind of gave a good idea of what you can do to get started with aviation. And right now, with buying non-certified pieces, consumer-grade joysticks, yokes, rudder pedals, throttle quadrants, and so on. Uh, I know there's a supply and demand issue. Please do not overpay for these products. Take it to your time, call around maybe at your local Target, Walmart, Micro Center, Fry's Electronics, 
maybe some of the other stores that might carry pieces like that in stock. And if all you can find is a joystick, just make sure it has a throttle quadrant and it has the yaw axis where you can actually twist the stick. That way you can taxi on the ground and everything else. Um, but you know, somewhere between $40 to $60 is a great entry point for a joystick. I know Thrustmaster has some really good joystick uh, possibilities out there, but again, you want to look for something that is built relatively with some good quality, and I think there are some good Logitech pieces. There are some bad Logitech pieces, uh, that, and it's kind of where an issue that we'll talk about in a little bit, and there's some good Thrustmaster pieces. If you're just going to have worn joystick with everything on it, make sure it has a pretty good base. That way, when you're flying, you don't tip the whole thing over. It's something you really need to keep in mind. And also, be careful when you're buying stuff off the used market. You don't have a way to test. You don't have a way to make sure the product really works. So please be careful with that. I, now, I'm very cautious if I ever buy anything off the used market. And I kind of poke and prod to see what I can find and kind of see what the seller's really saying to see what their reviews are previously. And I just... Be very careful, okay? Um, but as far as products go, there are a lot of things out there. And if you're shopping by price alone, I would really recommend sticking with the, uh, and say you can't spend more than 60 or $70 for a joystick. I would say look at Logitech and look at Thrustmaster. There are a couple pieces I think I recommended in my previous video. I'd look back at that and I'll try to put a few in the descriptions below as well of this whole video. I'll have a couple of links for you there. And if you're building something that's more intermediate setup with the yoke, rudder pedals, and throttle quadrant, I said it before, I'm gonna keep saying it. Look at Honeycomb Aeronautical. I have an idea of the people that are behind that. I know one of the one of the persons behind some of it. And it's somebody that actually flies. They fly airplanes, they have an idea of how this stuff should really work, they feel. They go out there and they do market research that's really important to making a quality product. And I have not had my chan a chance to get my hands on an alpha yoke yet from Honeycomb, but by what it all offers, you know, it's not just a yoke, it has a switch panel on it, which is really important if you're an actual student pilot learning how to do things and all the way up. It gives you a lot of functionality and it bridges the gap between being an intermediate and an advanced setup. And even for the price, I think that's a good investment if you have the money for it. Their throttle quadrant, is the go-to throttle quadrant for me. There's nothing else out there on the market that matches the build quality of that product and the functionality. Um, and I saw on their Instagram post, they have, looks like rudder pedals coming in. I can't wait to see those. But if you're somebody that's really serious about aviation, I say get on the Honeycomb pre-orders for the throttle quadrant. Get in there and get some of the Honeycomb products. If you're needing rudder pedals, I do not really like or suggest the CH products or rudder pedals or the SciTech now Logitech rudder pedals. I would really recommend looking at the Thrustmaster rudder pedals if you can get a hold of them right now. Not the pendulum ones, I've not had a chance to even play with those. They look pretty cool, but there looks to be a Thrustmaster rudder pedal setup that actually should feel like an actual rudder pedal on an aircraft versus how the CH products and the, um, the Logitech are so flat. Um, but as far as all these parts and pieces go, be careful of markups you're going to pay because there's such a short supply of these products right now. And I know some of these products are going to be compatible moving forward with Xbox Series X, which is huge if you're going to be a Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 person using that on your Xbox because the performance of the Xbox Series X is going to be that similar to that to a PC, if not better than some PCs, especially ones you're buying right now. So keep that in mind if you're looking to build a, a rig for flight simulation purposes. I think in the end, a desktop or a laptop is going to be better than the Xbox Series X because it gives you a lot more functionality. But that's for another video once we have final specs and uh, we can actually see Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 being used in the, uh, on the Xbox Series X on a longer period of time and what the functionality of all the yokes, joysticks, throttle quadrants, and rudder pedals are going to be. So, as far as simulation gear right now goes, let me pull this all back in. Look at what you're going to spend. Try to build yourself a budget. From your budget, look and see the products that you can actually get a hold of. I really recommend the Honeycomb Aeronautical Alpha Yoke. Get on that pre-order for the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. Excuse me, I don't think you're going to be disappointed with that. It's my go-to. 
Um, out of all the other throttle quadrants out there, there isn't one that offers that same functionality and capabilities for the price point. And for a consumer grade product, I think that's probably the top notch out of all of them right now. Uh, if you're looking for rudder pedals, probably start looking at the Thrustmaster Logitech after that, and then below there, the CH product rudder pedals. And if you're looking at the more advanced stuff, always try to reach out and find out what their actual lead time is on producing these more advanced pieces. It seems like Logitech is having a pretty good delivery time period right now for the switch panel, radio panel, multi-panel, and the uh, autopilot panel, sorry, I had to think about all of them there. And it looks like there's more and more support coming right now from Logitech for X-Plane 11 and Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. I have had a chance to play with both and they are starting to work. There are some a few idiosyncrasies. Now, maybe it could just be the fact that I'm using legacy SciTech products. But look at lead times, look at what your budget can afford and look about how soon you need it. Now, the last bit of this last bit of this video is going to talk about computers. And this is going to really come down to your budget and if you're a preference of AMD or Big Blue Intel, you know, it's what are you really looking for? And I'm personally using a laptop for all my videos for all my flight simulation right now. I did have a desktop. My motherboard got fried. Don't know why, but I'm looking to rebuild the desktop at some point. I am not going to say the laptop brand I'm using because this laptop is underperforming compared to its peers, which is quite annoying. The, uh, the way it's made though it is a Intel 10750H paired with an RTX 2080 Super Max Q and I'm getting easily 30 frames per second in almost every city at a mixture of high settings with a few things dropped down into medium, but mostly everything on high. And I've been very happy with my experience with that. Now with that said, you could easily build a desktop that's gonna have better performance than the laptop I'm using for less money. You can build a desktop for anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 and get quality experience in Microsoft Lite Sim 2020 or X-Plane 11. And with that said, let's think about it this way. You spend $1,500 on a desktop for, for performance you're gonna spend about two grand, if not more, to get that out of a laptop. And if you're new to laptops and desktops, I know there are other channels, Bob of All Trades, Gerald's Trek, Mobile Tech Review. Um, There's so many good uh, other YouTubers out there that talk about these products, uh, Jay-Z Two Cents and a bunch of other guys and gals that make awesome videos about thermodynamics, about what you're gonna get the best bang for your buck out of. And I would say if you're on a budget, Look at the AMD laptops with the 4800 or the 4900 paired with an RTX 2060. Those give you good performance and they should give you medium settings at 30 frames per second most likely. I haven't had a chance to test. I am putting feelers out there and emails out there to laptop manufacturers to see if I can at least get some trial units to show what they can do with Microsoft Lite Sim 2020 and X-Plane 11. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll get some in the next month or two. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll see. Uh, however, uh, AMD does a great job of sipping the battery juice if you're using this laptop for everything else. So say you're a college student, you're a high school student, you're maybe even a middle school student or somebody far and beyond doing anything else in life. And the AMD laptops do a better job of power usage than the Intel i7-10-7th and the equivalents. Per core performance, you're going to see this kind of weird game being played right now where the AMDs do a better job for some functionality, but if you're gaming or doing flight simulation, you're probably going to want to stick with the Intel chips. And that's going to go for both a desktop or a laptop. If you choose a laptop, though, let me say this here. If you're going to choose a laptop and you need battery life over performance, I would really look at the AMD 4800 or the AMD 4900. The 4900 specifically, I've seen, sorry about the cut there, so if you're looking for laptops that sip battery juice, I would say the AMD 4900 with the G14, I think, from Asus does a good job. And there are others coming out on the market right now, which is great. Uh, but if you're building a desktop, you kind of have your mix and choice of what you really want. Choose either AMD or Intel. It's really up to you. It just depends on your end user goals are for it. Intel does a great job reaching higher clock speeds. AMD does a great job of computational uh, bits, and it's 
I think you're going to get better performance for a flight sim in gaming out of Intel versus AMD. However, if you go on a video card, I still recommend NVIDIA paired up with either AMD or Intel CPUs. NVIDIA does a good job of making good quality drivers and fixing problems faster than AMD does right now. That might change in the future, so keep your eyes and ears out on that. And if you're going to build a desktop, you know, you can really start with anything as low as a 1070 from Intel for the, uh, I think it's the i7 or i9. I got to look that back up. Maybe I can put a link in the description below. But the 1070 from Intel and the uh, AMD, gosh, it's really up to you what you want to spend and how many cores you want. But I really think the 1070 is a good price point. Paired up with an RTX 2070 or an RTX 3070. And that's the next problem of this video. So... Do not, please, I'm going to scoot in a little bit more, do not pay the overage prices for some of the manufacturers right now charging for the RTX 3000 series. I've seen the prices finally stabilize, which is great, but don't go out there and spend a ton of money on a 3000 series RTX card right now. It's not worth it, just wait. Um, try to find maybe an RTX 2070 Super or 2070 Regular for your desktop and build from there. You're going to get good performance, you just won't have the the best and brightest brand new part. So 1070 with an RTX uh, 2070 and up or an RTX 3070 and up. And I think the sweet spot's really gonna be that RTX 3070 when the supplies are really in stock and everywhere and you're not having to pay out the wazoo for that part. Uh, with all that said though, it's really what your needs are. And a desktop's great if you're at home a lot and that's your primary purpose for your computer. A laptop's great for somebody like me is always traveling. And if you need that performance, I really like two laptops right now. There are a lot of thin and lights that do a good job, um, but they underperform. And you're paying a huge price for that thin and light cost. Anywhere from like the GS66 uh, Stealth, uh, Razor Blades, um, and Legion 7i, and so on and so forth. There are many thin and lights that really struggle to give you the numbers for the price you're paying. And I think the best go-to right now and one of my suggestions, some people are gonna hate, but straight out of the box, best performance and bang for the buck is probably gonna be the MSI GE66 Raider with the uh, RTX 2070 Super and maybe the 10750H, because I think the thermals between those two are gonna be perfect, and you'll get the maximum performance out of that unit versus maybe buying the 10980HK with an RTX 2080 Super Max Q, because you're just producing a ton of heat and you're paying a ton of money for a performance that's, sure, maybe five frames per second more, but is that really worth it to you? You know, you're looking at a $2,200 laptop, not on sale, versus a $3,000 laptop, and you're seeing maybe a three to 10% increase of performance depending on the game or flight simulator you're using. I don't think that's worth it. Um, if you can wait, wait for the new RTX 3000 series cards to come out in April in the laptops and buy one of those new laptops if you can wait. Or wait for the brand new AMD big navy parts to make their way to the laptops. This is going to be really interesting. And with the early reviews already coming in about the new NVIDIA GPUs and laptops, it's going to be a hit and miss thing because the new RTX cards pull a lot of power. Now put that into a laptop. It's going to be interesting to see the power and thermal regulations and how much performance gains we really see in the end. I'm waiting to see what a lot of the actual benchmarks and real world use show us in a couple of months. I'm betting by January CES uh, 2021, if it actually happens or if at least we get video versions of everything, maybe we'll have an idea of what kind of performance loss we'll have for the RTX 3000 GPUs and laptops. So. Desktop, I've already made some suggestions. Laptop, I think for the overall design of all the laptops right now, if you go Intel, your sweet spot for price, performance, thermals, and overall frames per second is probably going to be something with a 10750H paired with an RTX 2070 Super, non-Max-Q. I think that's going to be your best price point and performance. I know that's going to be more than $1,500 probably but that's gonna be your best price with performance gains right there. If your budget, I would look at maybe an RTX 2060 and a 10750H. I've seen some of those going as low as $1,200 and on sale, 
a few down to a thousand. Now that's going to be tough. Thanksgiving is coming up, so you might see some really good sales there. And if you're willing to go the AMD route, I really like the Asus G14. However, that gets really hot. So the longevity and life of that product will be questionable depending on if you reapply new thermal paste to it. Uh, certain compounds might help. And I think bang for the buck versus the uh, Tencent 50H uh, from Intel. That, those, a, those AMD 4800 chips paired with an RTX 2060 is a good budget option and should give you good performance for video gaming and for flight simulation. However, I hope to get maybe a laptop like that to get my hands on and actually see in use and show you all how well it does. So, I know that's a lot to take in. I know we're kind of all over the place on this one, but this is the first of many of these state of simulations to come. I hope it helps some of y'all out there. I'm gonna make sure there are timestamps throughout the video in the description below to help out. And if there's something you would like me to cover for flight simulation or aviation, uh, that's primarily what I'm doing all this for. I wanna help people that are simu simmers, like if you just wanna have fun playing flight simulations to anybody that's already a pilot and everyone all the way in between. I wanna help you find the best way to spend your hard earned money and have the most fun with flight simulators. So comments and complaints, put them in the uh, comments section below. If you don't like the video, let me know. I want to know how to make them better. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys all again sometime soon. Joe from NDB Aviation. Bye-bye.